Hi, I'm Trisha Morris. Welcome to the Gnome for Christmas page kit assembly workshop. I absolutely adore this collection. I hope you do too. We're gonna have a good time putting these layouts together. I always begin by getting rid of all of the embellishments. Just set those aside for now and we'll use them later. And let's isolate the paper that came in your box and we'll get started right away. The first thing we'll do is organize the papers in the order that we'll use them. So right out of the gates, I'm going to be using this adorable gnome print first. So just take one of them and put it face down on your work surface and the rest of the papers I'm just going to hold in the crook of my arm here so I can sort them easily. Next should be near the top of the pile but grab the other the border print. Just take one of those and put it face down. Next find two sheets of the brown. Now this this collection is a little different. There are actually three sheets of all the plain papers in there. So this is brown and make sure you have of the three, make sure you grab two and then two of that rose color. So there will be one left after you get the two. One ivory, oh, this paper is just so beautiful. And then one green. Then go toward the bo bottom of the stack for the cut aparts. We're going to find the one that has the border of stars first, putting that face down. And then this other, uh, <laughs> with the cute little gingerbread saying, no, no, well, I love him. Okay, that'll go face down. Next, the remaining brown plane, followed by the remaining border print. So just kind of dig for that. It's this guy. When we're working with the prints, we're going to put them face down because eventually we'll flip that stack back over. Then I want the other gnome print, followed by the rose plane, last one of those. Then get two of the green, and by process of elimination, we'll end with two ivory. Flip everything over to where we began with our cute little gnome print. And I've got my Fiskars trimmer here that I'm going to use. You know how much I love it. And if, if you're not sure how much I love it, maybe maybe get one and then try it. And then you'll know why I love it so much. Plus, I'm using my accordion pocket file here to keep organized. So that we're making a total of four sets of two pages each. So when I say one and two, that item will go in the pocket labeled one and two and so on. So that we can do all the trimming at once and then do all the assembly later. So if you don't have this, it's okay. Just maintain four separate piles, but don't delay in getting your accordion pocket file so that you can enjoy this scrapbooking method with me. Okay, so we're back to step one here, and I'm going to take my little gnome print and put him in the trimmer here and lift that blade all the way up. And if you're new to this trimmer, just remember it locks down here on this little notch. Okay, so I've just released the blade. I'm gonna find six and three quarters. So be mindful that every quarter inch on this uh, trimmer is marked by a vertical line, which is super handy. So when you find six and three quarters, you're gonna find the whole number six and go left one, two, three columns to find six and three quarters. And obviously that's gonna just get rid of our little gnomies over here and then slide to four inches. Yeah, stabilize on that clear bar before you slice so that the paper doesn't move. Pick up this piece here and we're gonna put that in pocket one and two. And when you do so, file at an angle so that you're not sh trying to shove it down into the pocket and you'll still be able to see the numbers on the left here. Then this little uh, piece fell out of the middle of the print. It's plain, we're gonna trim that. And there's this little piece of red here in the corner. I'm gonna put that on my right so that it becomes a scrap. I'm starting at 11 inches and again, stabilizing for each cut, then eight and a quarter, five and a half, and two and three quarters. You just made a bunch of squares here, one, two, three, four, put them all in pocket five and six, and then there's a little scrap that fell off the end. You can just set that aside. We have our big uh, Nomi here with his little Nomi. We're gonna put that in pocket one and two again at an angle. Then we're gonna take this border print and do the obvious thing. I'm gonna place it into my trimmer with the borders running vertically on both ends. And we'll just do a simple trim at nine. Stabilize. And three. So all the way down to three. Take this three inch piece and pop it in three and four. And then take the larger 
blank area of this piece and we'll cut again uh, into different uh, sections. So we're gonna start at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Gather the three pieces that fell that are the same, pocket seven and eight, and then this little guy is a scrap. The remaining little border strip here, pocket three and four. And we're moving on to the brown. Now, remember we found two brown. We're only going to trim one at a time. So make sure you have a brown next to you and a brown in your trimmer base. First time, we're going to cut here at ten and a quarter. Eight and a half. And four and a quarter. Rotate this piece that's in the base. Trim at six. They both go, both pieces the same size, pocket three and four. Pick up the next strip and we'll once again trim at six. Stack these two together for seven and eight, pocket seven and eight. Then you have two strips the same size that remain. Those both go in pocket three and four. Take the other brown and this time we'll trim at ten and a half. And then slide to six and a quarter. Rotate so it's horizontal. We'll trim at eight and a half and four and a quarter. We just made two nice photo mats here and they're both gonna go in pocket one and two. Now there is that little piece that fell off the end. We'll trim at six and three. Just made two rectangles of the same size. Those go in pocket five and six. There is a tiny scrap that fell off the end. You can uh, set that aside. All right, follow along carefully with me here. This is our, a lot of cuts, but it shouldn't be too bad. The first one is at 11. <laughs> Eight and three quarters, six and a half, and four and a quarter. The square goes in pocket seven and eight, and then you have three rectangles the same size. Put one of them in pocket one and two, then the next one, five and six, and the last one, seven and eight. And there is a little guy here off the end. Set him aside. He's a scrap. And then the strip, seven and eight. Rows. Now you have two sheets, remember. So I only want you to cut one at a time. Why do I remind you of this? Because it's happened. Let's start this one at 11 and three quarters. I know, that's a really big number. It's going to make a little tiny strip. It's by design. Then slide to six and a quarter. This is kind of a review from the last uh, piece. We'll rotate and cut at eight and a half and four and a quarter. The two photo mats that are the same here, pocket three and four. And once again, pick up the little rectangle. We'll cut at six and three. Pocket three and four on both of those. You had a little piece that fell off the end. That would be a scrap. And now I will grab this last strip here. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. And then you have uh, three rectangles, all the same size, pocket one and two and a little scrap that fell off the end, this really skinny little piece here, pocket three and four. Now, if all this measuring is getting to you, like you're overwhelmed, let me encourage you right now to hang in there with me, press pause as much as needed, maybe even adjust your playback speed, but don't give up, okay? You will get better and better at this the more you practice, especially if you're not used to measuring. So hang in there with me, maybe do a few more kits and you will get the hang of it, I promise. All right, this a second sheet of rows will cut at 11, and nine and three quarters, eight and a half, 
six and a quarter. Now rotate and trim at eight and a half and four and a quarter. Again, you've made two photo mats, so those will go in pocket five and six. Now on this one, we're gonna do a little, something a little different. We're gonna trim at three and then rotate this piece so it's horizontal and cut it three and a quarter. Now something really cool just happened. We're gonna do this with another sheet of paper in a different color, but we just created two pieces that will nest together perfectly. And in the end, we'll swap the colors so we have two nesting pieces from this uh, kind of scrap. This is pretty cool. Both of these go in pocket three and four. The larger strip, oh, sorry, there is a little scrap that fell. The next strip in the pile is wider. That goes in one and two. The next two strips are the same size, seven and eight. And the last smaller strip, also pocket seven and eight. And we're moving on to the ivory. And this time we're gonna go to six and a quarter. Rotate and cut at eight and a half, four and a quarter. Gather up the two rectangles. One of them goes in five and six and the other in seven and eight. And then we're gonna make the mates for those other nesting pieces. So we'll cut at three, rotate and cut at three and a quarter. These both go in pocket three and four. You have a little scrap, you can set that aside and then take the next piece. We'll trim at 11 and a quarter, eight, and four. Okay, gather up the two rectangles that are the same. Those are going in pocket three and four. And then you have this little guy. We're gonna cut this one at five and a half and two and three quarters. Gather these up and they both go in pocket five and six. And you have just a couple of scraps to set aside. Next up, you've got the green. We'll trim this one at 11, 10, 8, and 5 and 3 quarters. Rotate and trim at 10 and a half, 7, 3 and a half. So you just made three pieces the same. They're all gonna go in pocket seven and eight. And then there's this little piece here. We're actually going to use it. All right, so let's start out at, uh, horizontally here at four and a half, three, one and a half. Now, even for these little pieces, make sure that you're stabilizing on that little bar, even in the corner here. I like that I can trim small things with this trimmer just fine with the help of that bar. You have two squares, they go in pocket one and two, and the other two pieces, even though they're not the same, put those in five and six. I found a home for them. Okay, and then we have this next strip. If you wanna verify, it should be two and a quarter inches wide. We'll trim horizontally at eight and a half and four and a quarter. The two pieces that are the same size, seven and eight. There was a little smaller one that fell off the end, three and four. Then you've got this next strip here. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. All right, you got three pieces the same. This one of them, pocket one and two. Next one, five and six. The next one, seven and eight. And then there's a tiny piece that fell off the end. That's a scrap. We have two strips going in pocket one and two, and we've arrived at cut apart. Now, for those of you who've been around for a while, you know the next step, you know what you've got to do, get started on that. But we have to remove the outer perimeter of this sheet based on those uh, guides marked in the corner here where it says remove paper from the outside of the cutting guides. So what I basically do is look at the outside edge of my silver blade on my trimmer 
and I'm going to cut generously. In other words, outside of that line, just for my first cut so that when I rotate on my trimmer now, I can see the edge of the paper both at the top and bottom mark. You'll know what I mean when you're doing it at home. It'll make perfect sense, I promise. Okay, so now I'm going to line this up. Rotate. I can see pretty well now. Rotate again. And at this point, I should be able to go to the 12. Look at the 12 inch mark here on the left. And that should set me up pretty accurately on the right. And get rid of all your tiny little strips. Those are, you know, for the circular file. And I always like to trim my cut aparts uh, with the tiniest pieces on the right edge. Also in the instructions, I will indicate how it's oriented in the trimmer so that you're not cutting through artwork. You don't even need to follow the instructions for this. If you just want to look at it, you can guide the blade between each piece. And usually the numbers round up to the nearest quarter inch. So I start out at 10 and a half here. Sparkle and shine. It's Christmas time should be on your right. Then we move to nine. Eight and a quarter. Seven and a half. And four. And rotate. We'll trim at eight and four. Let's get these pieces filed. This one is going in one and two. The gnomes. He gnomes if you've been bad or good. <laughs> and then I'll be gnome for Christmas in seven and eight. You've got your journaling prompt, pocket three and four. And this large tree, five and six. The two star borders, one and two. And the remaining two strips, pocket three and four. Okay, so we get to do that one more time with the remaining cut apart. Then we'll be able to put the trimmer away. So I'm just cutting generously on that first rotation. And now I'm going to aim for the hash marks. And just go around the entire perimeter. Shaving off that. So this is so that the piece can be nice and accurate um, because on those large commercial trimmers it's just not as accurate as I like it to be. Sometimes that paper slips around a little bit. All right so we've got these borders here and I want to point out something else too if, if you're struggling a little bit with keeping up and you've been at it for a while I notice sometimes in workshops and make and takes that um, people hold on to the handle and only have control of the paper with one hand. Well, if your trimmer blade goes down without you holding it up, then I recommend you continue to do that. But if it stays up on its own, which with this model it does, um, then you can push and pull with both hands and get a measurement much more quickly and accurately. So I'm gonna start at 11 and then go to 10, eight, and four. Now rotate. Now remember that your smallest piece should be on your right when you cut at 10 and 6. All right, this larger piece, pocket 7 and 8. And we've got our snowflake going in 1 and 2. Love this one, the four stages of life. You believe in Santa, you don't believe in Santa, you are Santa, and you look like Santa. That's 7 and 8. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, here we go. Tags on the right. We'll go 10, 8, 6. Then with scissors, I'm just going to separate out. I'm not going to fussy cut at this point these images. Maybe I'll just get a little close on that one. And these guys get separated. Watch out for his little top hat there. Okay. So you've got the reddish colored gift for pocket three and four, the brown one going in five and six, the snowman in seven and eight, and our cute little gnome in one and two. For the tags, red box, one and two. Brown, uh, this grayish ashy colored one, that's seven and eight. And then this cute little uh, more brownish gift here with the red bow, five and six. Memories and magic are what Christmas is all about. One and two. 
two more cute little borders here going in seven and eight. And my friends, congratulations, you've reached the end of the trimming process. So get rid of that trimmer. I always lock the blade before I disengage there. And then I always support my accordion pocket files so that it doesn't fall off the table. And uh, because the trimmer is really what holds it up, all right? Then you have this pile of remaining paper. We didn't trim it, and that's because it needs to be the base for our future pages, right? So take the entire stack and take the top sheet off the top and move to the right. So position the, pa the papers from the top side by side as shown here, brown on right, the entire remaining stack on your left. And then let's turn in our instructions to the last page. That's page five for me. And if you look at the layouts labeled seven and eight, it's the bottom picture here, you'll see right away that the border print is supposed to be on the left and the brown is supposed to be on the right. And that's how I've queued up all the paper. So it's just, you know, you're not hunting, you're not trying to dig through a pile of anything. Everything is so organized, it makes it so easy. Then it, from pocket eight, seven and eight, let's take everything out. So I just check to make sure there's nothing in there. And I'm going to hold all of the contents of seven and eight in my left hand. And I'm gonna to try to recreate what I see in the image here um, in my um, instructions. So, and I'm gonna help you too, because there might be some things that aren't perfectly clear. And uh, keep that in mind. Like if you're trying to do a layout without my help, just, and you you're struggling, consult the video anyway, because here you are. And then, um, the video pages are marked in chapters. So let's say you only have a question for layout seven and eight. You can find it in the chapter quite easily on YouTube. So notice I've nested the brown with the red and then I've got a border going on top. Then this one here. Now the skinniest of the three uh, red strips will go on the right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and distribute the three ivory prints here. This was from the, the middle of the other border print, so it ties in really nicely. It's going to be covered anyway, so <laughs> no big deal. On top of those, we can nest some of this cute little green. Bring some green into the mix. I love this shade of green. So lovely. Now the rose color goes right next to it to kind of frame it up. And then you've got an ivory photo mat up here nesting with this great big cut apart. Beneath that, you're going to have a pair of these green pieces. They're both going to be four and a quarter inches wide. And one of them is going to nest your sentiment here, the four stages of, of life. Okay, now just above the border strip, I'm going to take this larger brown piece. So the bottom is just above the strip. And then for the other one, I'm going to bring it down to the bottom edge. Above it, put the square nested with I'll be gnome for Christmas. Now here we have a mat for the tag. Now I clipped the corners so you can do that. And then we're just gonna do a little fake here and just kind of slide this into one of those craft envelopes that came in the goodies, kind of like it's coming out of the bag. This is designed to fit right on top of the bag. I have it kind of lined up with the top edge there. And I'm gonna place this in this spot here. Take a few moments and fussy cut this cute little snowman and he's gonna kinda of lay on top of this area here. The other details I'm gonna show you on my finished layout. Let's take a look. I incorporated quite a bit of that beautiful ribbon on top of the red strip. So this is a three-part bow here. You can kinda of see I have it really well secured. I, I used adhesive to secure a strip of the red ribbon going all the way across the page. Here I topped the Christmas tree charm with the jute. Then with a little book binding glue, I added this darling little uh, snowball <laughs> to his hat. And then I tied the whole works with some more jute and a little bow. That's, that's that side. I do have a ribbon basics video if you're not sure how to make this bow, otherwise you can you know, omit anything you like. Now on the facing page, you can see that I have this darling little fussy cut snowman. I didn't go through a lot of effort to get his, you know, his hands. I mean, I, I left some white space in there, right? And on here, you can see my clipped corners. I used my slot punch to just cut a slot in this and I stapled it with some of that same ribbon from the other side. I topped the Christmas tree with that corduroy star, again, using our bookbinding glue for that, as well as another little 
uh, snowball on the top of his hat. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. It's just so darling. Hope you love these pages. I sure do. Okay, that's it for layout seven and eight. We're not going to do any adhering right now, and I don't think you should either. I think I want you to follow along with me for this dry fit process. In other words, no adhesive. I'm picking up the base of layout seven, moving it on top of eight. Then take the next sheet on top, which is this gnome print, and slide that over. And now you have the base for layouts five and six here. So I will grab my accordion pocket file. Can't remember where that went. And I'm going to take everything out of the pocket labeled five and six. I think this was in three and four. Okay. Again, I like to distribute from the hand. It's a little easier than picking up individual pieces all the time. And um, only if you, if you feel comfortable. I understand it feels like a little bit challenging for you. I get it. All right, so here we have these little squares that we, we trimmed, and I'm gonna place those in a row. And because of their size, in other words, they're two and three quarters inch, inches square, they distribute perfectly across a page like that with nice even spacing. Love that. And then to the right of it, we'll add this gigantic uh, border strip here. I did top the Christmas tree with another little <laughs> corduroy star. And then you've got a four by six photo mat here. Got your little ivory mats now nesting onto the brown here. Isn't that sweet? Okay, then over on the other side, two rose colored mats. And I did a little thing with the some a craft knife. I'm gonna show you that trick in a minute. Grab the um, craft bag here, and I'm gonna nest my tag, my journaling prompt here again onto the brown. Clip the corners if you want, add ribbon if you want. Kind of scoot it into the envelope. It's gonna go down at the bottom of the page nested with this green. Then in the upper right, I've got my, just like these little, just to bring the green into it, kind of round it out, balance the page a little bit. This little gift, you'll fussy cut it and add it under the tree with some pop dots, okay? So let's talk about what I did here. Now look at the back side of this page. Do you see how the, the rose colored mat is peeking through? That's because I brought Mr. Santa's, or Mr. Nomi's hand into the foreground. So I just figured out where I wanted um, the, the this mat right here. And I took a pencil and just marked on either side of the sleeve and on either side of the hat. I took away the photo mat and went to my cutting mat there and took a craft knife and just cut around the, that image up to the pencil mark. Same thing here. I just cut a little V into it. And again, I could slide the photo mat behind those images. They're not going to interfere with a picture, right? Plus, I left this area free of adhesive so I can slide the picture there. There's my little slot punch, addition of the ribbon, just a loop of it. And here's my little mini snowball on top of his hat and his hat. Oh, and this guy too. Don't forget him. All right, that's page six. Then for five, again, as I mentioned, this uh, gift is pop dotted from the cut aparts, and I added the star. Now I will slide the base of five over onto six, and then one more to slide. We've got two green we're looking at. Let's reverse direction in our instructions. Now we're at layouts three and four. So I'll grab the the pocket, three and four. Everything comes out, and I think this is, yeah, this goes with this. That little gift popped out of my pocket. I wasn't sure where it was supposed to go. We'll begin with our uh, border strips here. It doesn't really matter which one you put. I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch at the top here and about an eighth of an inch at the bottom. And then remember that cute little piece of rose that we cut, that's gonna go right under here. So typically what I do is adhere the larger piece. Then I take my needle tip glue applicator and run a line of glue with the tip just guiding along the edge of the paper. Then I bring the paper to the glue, okay? And it sticks nice, nicely, very, very easy, nice and neat and clean. Take one of those brown, strips and leave a little gap so we get more green in the picture and then we'll add our sparkle and shine it's christmas time and we'll kind of reflect that over here on the right side of the page with this open border here vertically you'll have two uh, rose colored mats here 
Now over here, we've got two vertical brown, and then we'll nest it with the ivory. And again, I, I did a lot of vertical in this, these lats intentionally because of the vertical Christmas tree. Uh, let's see, how about this circle? Now you can uh, die cut this or scissor cut it. It's got a nice uneven border, which makes it easy to trim. A cute little scrap I just incorporated there along with the fussy cut gift. Then we have our nestables here. So let me see if I can sort that out. This ivory nested onto the rose and that's gonna be tucked here. And then I should have a rose nested onto the ivory. Bingo, that's gonna tuck here. The remaining two will go in the upper left. Ta-da! All right, let's take a look at our finished pages and elements here. So there's the um, the gift, again, keeping this area free of adhesive. I added some jute to the top of the candy cane and then adhered it right into the gingerbread man's hand, added the little <laughs> snowball on his hat, three stars. Oh, and across this entire thing, just a strip of that stunning ribbon. There's no text on here to cover. It's just really, really beautiful anchoring device for that beautiful ribbon. Then on the facing page here, you've got your little uh, snowball on his hat, some more jute tied candy cane on, in his hand. The rest of it's very straightforward, nothing, nothing special to cover there. We'll take this piece, slide it down. Once again, take the top sheet of ivory, and here we are landing on layouts one and two. So obviously we'll empty the contents of pocket one and two, make sure you have everything. And let's see here, we're gonna take this cute little guy, we're gonna put him on the right side, split him up, put him on the left. Then if you find those rose colored mats in there, those should lay out nicely down the left edge of the right page with a nice even spacing. Take the green strip here and we'll add a star border to that, should create some nice space here. Then on the left, we're gonna add the green strip next to this as well with the star. And then up above, you're gonna run the red across and I know it's covering his hat, tough beans. <laughs> we have to have a title. And below that, we'll do our two horizontal brown. And that's here. Our circle that you can either trim or die cut. You've got this square over here. Uh, we're gonna do the same routine again. So you've got a mat for your journaling tag here and then we'll meet up with the pocket and add our green. That's gonna go on the left. I just kind of keep that out of the pocket. It's up to you if you wanna, you know, however you wanna do that. Fussy cut him out. And then you got two little room for two little squares up here. Add some green, kind of some balance for the page once again. That's that's cool. <laughs> okay, now I did some fun stuff here. I wrapped the corners of this, and I think just a, that simple act adds so much. Top the uh, charm with the jute again and glue it onto this round tag. This one I had a cutting die that uh, gave it a nice perforated edge border. There you go. Cute as can be. I do have it overlapping again here, but I have a spot for the picture to slide under. On the facing page, I added a strip of that gorgeous champagne colored satin ribbon underneath this. So it's kind of covering part of it. Um, I think this is probably one of my favorites was adding a little snowball to each light that he's holding. My slot punch created a way for my ribbon to loop around. And then once again, the jute tied candy cane in his hand. Mm -mm -mm. That is just the cutest collection I think we've ever done right down to the peaking gingerbread man which everyone just thought was adorable so hang out with these guys this holiday season it's going to be a lighthearted, fun Christmas for all I certainly hope with this kit it will be and check out our card kit as well we even have a project with this collection that I think you're going to love it's perfect for gift giving so uh, stay tuned for all of that fun and join me for the other workshops we're gonna have a great time making cards and projects together and if you haven't already, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, leave me a happy comment. And I love to read those and I look forward to seeing you again in another workshop soon. Happy holidays.